the idea of meetings is something which is very interesting and i've been reading about it a little bit which uh, helped me understand that a lot there are a lot of articles out there which talk about that you know meetings half of the meetings are a waste of time uh, they they're not very productive and you know mm-hmm. the idea of meeting it could just be an email stuff like that so what do you guys feel is sort of the way to improve productivity when it comes to a meeting well i rushi i think you should take this because rushi is a practitioner of a idea called reverse meetings in which he blocks his own time and allows people to drop in so rushi i think this is like a tailor made question for you yeah i think i, I think concept <laughs> i think meetings are essential okay uh, uh meetings uh, have got a bad name because of the manner in which they are conducted i think right, right. you know if you start a meeting on time if you start without an agenda uh, if you end a meeting without any action items um, if you don't decide to have uh, 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 a decision at the end of it and so on i think those are the ones that create uh, a bad name but just imagine that you know there are four five people who come prepared for a meeting and whose time could be better utilized just by being in the same space Uh, whether virtual or uh, on on uh, offline doesn't matter but four five members or maybe even six members working solely on one idea uh, i think that's a very powerful ritual uh, that can happen at offices but most of the times we tend to ignore that and uh, make it sound like uh, you know it's a it's a way of catching up on things um, way of settling old arguments moving away from the agenda uh, disrespecting other people's times your own time uh, often times uh, i think that is what causes these studies these uh, waste meetings are a waste so i think what i would say is that badly conducted meetings are a waste of time but good meetings at the end of the of which you have a direction or some clarity or you know even conflict resolution that happens because you are in the same room just like i would like to take back to uh, to talk back about the um, yeah. attendance meeting that in gautam spoke about and you know we have numerous examples like that at work uh, where just being there and you know staying on the problem in that meeting helped us to get uh, those things done uh, so so definitely i think uh, we need discipline uh and that comes again from how much of execution we want in our day to day life so if our focus is execution uh then meetings can become very powerful like for instance our engineering teams uh, practice agile development so the daily scrum right. or the daily stand up meeting that they have yeah. for 15 yeah. minutes those are very very powerful um, so so and that that really helps to uh get things moving and which is why agile as a form of development or form of project management uh, is gaining speed everywhere uh, so i think uh, short answer uh, discipline focus on execution will automatically lead to productive meetings which will lead to better use of everybody's time like to add one point on mm-hmm. this and maybe it's not a point it's more of a question So as you said about standups and scrum meetings right it's one of the things that uh, I also do at my workplace the, the, we have daily standups across multiple projects um how do you like is there an indicator according to you that would help us sort of understand that hey at the end of the meeting was it something that was productive apart from like as you said there are certain action points but we get to know if they're taken or not like in the sense that they're executed or not but is are there some like 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 is there a litmus test that's available out there for us to sort of know that this meeting was valuable or there are certain feedbacks that i can work on like in scrum for example we have something called uh, there is a feedback meeting after the when we end a project we take a feedback of like whatever sprints we had how do you sort of make it better where is the time waste going on so something like that for not just tech industry for every industry that we're working in uh uh i think uh, like i said i think the 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 measurement of uh, a productive meeting is very simple uh if you define the outcomes beforehand so you say that guys at the end of this meeting uh, you would have arrived at this so you sort of envision the end and then you begin with the end 
so that you know even if the uh, uh, discussion veers away from it then you can as the uh, prime facilitator you can bring it back and say that guys this is not going to help us answer the question that we uh, started off with and again i think yeah. that question has to be specific it can't be strategy for 2022 it has to be you know actionable items for 2022 that will cover aspects or strategy that focuses on the you know competitor behavior for instance and and the comp such as a b and c so therefore if you have that then agenda uh, or the action point or outcome expected uh, at the start of the meeting at the end of the meeting you can simply map and see if you achieve that so just to summarize that you're saying that we there, there needs to be a context for the meeting to be set before the meeting starts correct and uh, that context needs to be tracked across the period of the meeting and it's easier to bring everyone to the same page when that's been done correct and other thing is that there needs to be certain actionable points that are being talked about rather than having a vague topic that's being discussed to save everyone's time right 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 out so so that's what so yeah, out, right. specific outcome expected should be mentioned that that even if it is like oh so so the this meeting for instance four of us just get together yes. to brainstorm on possible names of the new project okay and right. so, so you should say that at the end of this we should have at least you know five top names which decided between us which we can then present to the management or your boss or other team members and then they can vote on right. it uh, so so that that sort of uh, uh, specific outcome uh, should be mentioned at the uh, beginning of the meeting makes sense so it's like also also another point you're saying is that the end should also be defined as to what are we going to do post the meeting and what are the things that need to be achieved in the sense that in the next meeting what we can do right. can also be carved in the same meeting for having a better understanding hmm. Hmm. so uh, makes sense so part i think you also had a point yeah so i think uh, on a slightly humorous note i read a quote once um, it was about committees actually but i think it fits into the big meetings part so the quote is goes like this that uh, big meetings are for people who can individually do nothing about a problem and together meet and decide that nothing can be done about the problem there is a book called trillion dollar coach okay uh, written yeah. about uh, bill campbell coach campbell. to steve jobs and eric schmidt and basically who whoever mattered in the silicon valley was coached yeah. by this guy okay uh, so he he so sundar piche in fact asked him ki how do i decide which meeting should i be a part of or not Uh, because if, if this was before he became a ceo but he was still a very senior leader there so right. he, bill campbell answer was so i think this is answer to a subset of your question that how do you how do senior how does senior leadership decide should i be a part of this meeting or not so bill campbell advised him that you be a part of the meeting where you have to take a decision at the end of it. so you have to decide on either a course of action or so you understand it, there's a decision at the end of that meeting that is the meeting that requires uh, a leader's presence so that's what he advised to a lot of the senior leaders i just thought i think a subset of the answer could be found in that book but obviously in general i think rushi's idea is right that you have to move forward on your goals i think that's the uh, mantra but also just one more point uh, on the same topic right when when you should be part of the meeting from a leader's perspective one more mm-hmm. point it could be a, a, a conflict resolution uh, when two parties uh, have yes, a different yes. point of view uh, somebody who is senior or somebody who is uh, you know decision maker can come in and resolve that that's something that i have also seen in my uh, kind of work. Yeah, yeah correct correct very i mean that's kind of a decision making right correct, because correct. decision making only correct, correct. Yeah, yeah yeah very true very true. i uh, just uh, just when rushi was talking about the 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 importance of uh, setting the agenda and having an action point i was just i just got a reminder of my my time in deloitte and this is something that deloitte does really well uh, when we have client meetings uh, we make we make it a point to have one person uh, to be the finisher sort of you know in in cricket we have a finisher role right where he he makes sure that the team gets over the line right and get or get the required score this is that there will be one designated person in the team from the consulting team that would ensure that the agenda items are uh, documented in the beginning uh, 
then we move we touch upon every uh, every such uh, agenda item on the on the paper and then finally uh, the action points uh, lay out the action points um, on each of the agenda item so this person would be the one who would be uh, actually moderating the whole call and then eventually summing up the call saying okay for this point you are we are on this we are on the stage and then he would also be the person who would be sending out the minutes in the form of an action action template where you know he would list out all the action points and then the current statuses and the people responsible and then calling it out in an email or a or if there is any other format that also so i think that's a very that's something that i learned personally uh, because i i was somebody who was who would get easily distracted who would just uh, who would just all go all across all over the place when have you have you know when, when you having these discussions or generally not focus enough to follow up on action points but one thing that deloitte has taught me is to when you have conversations and you have um you know when you when you make it more outcome driven when uh, and have these sort of tools to use in your personal life also so whenever i have a call or with somebody i would end it by saying okay this is what we've decided and this is what we what we're going to do uh, and that certainly we helped my in my personal life also.